In this video, we'll take a look at five more text tools. And to help things along, I'm going to float the text toolbox. This will just make things a little easier to see. The five tools I'm interested in are the last five on the toolbox itself. We'll start with the first one, which is called Copy Increment Text. It's a very simple tool to use. So the first thing I need to do is place some text. Click on the text tool and let's place some text. And we'll give it a number, 12, as an example. Then I start the Copy Increment Text tool and Watch the prompts all the time for these five tools because they are a little different. The prompt is to identify the element, which I will. And it's going to copy the text, click and drag, data point to place it. And notice that the number has incremented to 13. And each time I place text, the number will increment. So a very simple tool to use. And that's all it does, just increments a number, which is part of the text itself. So this tool is obviously very useful if you have multiple instances of an element or an object in a drawing which need to be numbered sequentially but with the same name. Moving on to the next tools, uh, let me first of all undo those. And the next tools are sort of related to the text nodes that we, that we discussed previously, but they're not quite the same, but they almost do the same job. I'm going to skip along the line here and look at this tool. It's called the fill in single enter data field. And I need some data fields first for this tool to work. So let's do that now. Going back to the place text tool. And instead of placing actual characters here, I'm going to place fields, which are simply the underline character as follows. Hold down the shift key, hit the underline character on your keyboard. And I'm going to place four of these. And notice they popped into place on the screen. And I'll data point to place one and two, and I'll do three and four. There, they're done. Now I'm going to start the element selection tool just to get out of the text tool. Now those data fields, the underlying characters, can be thought of as blank fields waiting for text to be inserted. They're similar to text nodes in that they retain the font attributes with which they were created. But the significant difference is that the fields limit the number of characters in the text string, in this case, four. With the fields in place, let's try the first tool again, which is the fill in single enter data field. And you really have to watch the prompts on the status line with these tools. So we'll start the tool. The text editor pops into place and the status line says identify an element, which will be the first of the data fields. So we'll select that. And a box surrounds the data fields themselves. Now we can enter text in the text editor above. I'll simply use one, two, three, four. There's one, two, three, four. Now watch the prompts. It says enter text, which I've just done, or carriage return to fill the field. So I press enter at the keyboard. The characters pop into place. And they pop into place in whatever font is currently set. Now the font is such that the data fields expand with the characters themselves. Now that's all that does. If I want to fill in another data field, I must repeat the process. Tools running, select data field, enter characters. Let's do five, six, seven, eight, just to be different. Enter to place the characters and we're done. Going back to the element selection tool to cancel the tool. Now note that the data field markers, the underlying characters, remain in the view after the characters are inserted. This may not be what you want, so you can turn off the markers by going to View Attributes and turning off the data fields item, which turns off the fields. A bit like text nodes, you can turn text nodes on and off in the same way. Let's turn those back on again. Now, if you decide that you need more fields in a particular set of fields, you can simply use the text editor to add or subtract fields. Now onto the next tool. And before I go there, I'm going to undo those two placements, leaving the fields in place. The next tool is at the end of the line. 
and this is the auto fill in enter data fields. And this doesn't actually automatically fill in the characters. What it does is automatically find data fields for you to enter characters in. Let's try it and see. Start the tool. We must select the view where the data fields are. So I'll simply select the view, left click, and the tool finds the first data field and puts the box around it, similar to the previous tool. I can now enter the text I need. One, two, three, four. And I must hit the Enter key to enter the text. So Enter, text pops into place. The tool finds the next set of data fields and highlights those. Enter text in there too. Press Enter, and it finds the next field, and so on, until there are no more fields left in the view. So the automatic part of this tool is simply to find the next set of data fields. Now let's look at the remaining two tools, which is this one, which is the copy enter data field and the copy increment enter data fields. Let me go backwards a couple of times here, Control Z, leave that one in place. And let's use this one first, copy enter data field. Click on that, select enter data field to copy. Again, watch the prompts. It's this one. And now we select where we want the information to be copied to, this one. And we have that data copied to that field. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's do that again. Let's choose that one to copy, and I'm going to put it right there. Okay. And then we'll go to the next tool, this one. Copy, increment, enter data fields. Now this one will increment any numerical values in the data fields. And we get a choice. In the tool settings window, the tag increment default is one. We can change that, of course. Let's change that to five, just to be different. And let's increment this one. So the prompt says, select the enter data field to copy and increment. That's this one. Where's it going to? Going to there. We have copied the fields and incremented by five at the same time. So there's five tools that you can experiment with. And I would suggest doing that if your professional activities use this kind of information, because they're actually quite handy tools. And in fact, one thing you might experiment with is when you initially place the data fields with the place text tool, try changing the inter character spacing value here, which by default is zero, and the results are what you see on the screen here. But try changing this value to start with one as a value and enter the fields and see what happens. What it will do, of course, is space the fields further and further apart as you increase the value. You may find that the value of zero creates fields which are too close together for the text you want to place. So try that too.